Welcome back everyone, live here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, with Dave Vellante. We are here for SuperCloud 7. We're really unpacking the future of the next data platform. We have Ven Katashanta, Chief Technology Data and Analytics Officer at TransUnion, a leader in building a platform around next generation data. Venkat, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you, Th thank you, John. This is our seventh super Thanks. cloud, which we started what, two years ago now, a year and a half, it yeah. feels like 10 years ago. 2021 is when we first sort of coined the term. But and, yeah. and really we saw the early days of multi-cloud, but really what it was was a distributed computing, heterogeneous platform that was going to look different. It was going to look very cloud-like, cloud scale-like, but also have a lot of new abstraction to it for data control planes, um, we didn't say generative AI, but it was basically machine learning and, and intelligent applications were on the horizon. You guys are doing that. So take a minute to explain um, your environment. Describe what you guys have got going on over there. What's the data you have? What's the data state look like? Uh, and what you guys put in place, because you guys have been investing, you're a pioneer in building out end to end, which we've been saying is a dream scenario for Gen AI because you control all the data. Take a minute to explain what you guys have. Yeah, th thank you, John. And uh, we at TransUnion operate in over 30 countries with a lot of regulated data and very critical consumer data. That's across over billion consumers across 30 countries. And uh, some of the, our core business is data and analytics and information and insights company. As such, data platform is at the core of anything that we do. As such, we have differentially invested into our platform and transforming our company into a platform-centric company from a data and scores company into a more platform-centric company where we are leveraging the platform that we built, but we are also offering platform-based products to our customers in, in, in this end-to-end -end data analytics value chain. So we onboard anywhere from tens of thousands of data sets over 50 billion data points every day that we collect. And we curate that data, the data quality cataloging of the data. More importantly, connecting that data we call identity resolution. Trying to figure out where this food, this data belongs to. And then serving up that data into intelligent uh, predictive applications and cognitive applications for banks and the consumers to yeah. consume. So that's our core business, we're in core uh, credit of fraud and marketing across the consumer life cycle centered by identity. And as a result, all of this could be done only if you have the best data platform that can scale to the highest levels, but also be able to do in a very highly governed, high guardrail environment with very permission-based controls. So that's the environment we operate in. Venkat, great um, setup there, because I think this is the enterprise's future, your environment. And just to kind of put a little bit more context to, to the next couple of questions is we've had the Uber team on has come in there, senior engineers have come on, um, mainly because one, they're a big fan of the Cube and what we do because they're like, oh, they, we speak their language. They had to build it from scratch because they, they were thrust into this mode where they had multiple databases, had the column stores here, and they had to build their own data lake from scratch. Otherwise they'd be streaming all the costs. So very much forced, kind of gun to the head, survival. Your guys have business, you've been, you've seen waves of vendors bring you solutions. And so you had to kind of change the airplane engine out 35,000 feet all the time. So yeah, absolutely. What, what was, what's it like? When was the moment when you realized, okay, cloud's here, got to get in there. And then when the cloud started happening, when did you see the end to end platform? What came together? What was the catalyst? What was the driver? So TransUnion has, uh, we have a lot of core businesses. I myself came in through an acquisition, uh, a big acquisition that one of the largest acquisitions TransUnion ever did called Newstar. Newstar transformed into Cloud 1.0, into 2.0. We were talking about multi-cloud abstraction. We built this platform for one dev that abstracts across multiple clouds. And at that time, the biggest uh, driver was our cloud costs were growing faster than the, our revenue was growing. How do you bend the costs and how do you get to a cloud? How do you get to a cloud 2.0 where we're leveraging and Newstar itself grew through a lot of acquisitions. We had a lot of startups in the Bay Area that are doing data management platforms and others, marketing analytics, you know, for advertising and space where we have petabytes and petabytes of data. So the 
core tenets of the original platform strategy started with new star where that is the only way to survive. We cannot actually, we need to bend the cost curve of this cloud. We were all in cloud, but we had to get to the next generation of, we can't get each product engineering team to do their own stack. We have to look like a 2000 people company, not a 50, 30 people, come, 30 engineer company that were doing different flavors of that is driving up the cost very high. That was the original intent. And once Newstar came part of the TransUnion, obviously TransUnion had the acquisitions being a large enterprise with uh, over 4 billion revenue operating in 30 countries with 13,000 people and over 5,000 engineers. You can see, imagine how many flavors you'll have. So the essence is being able to, it's not just about cost for TransUnion, it's able to drive innovation faster. All of these silos, all of the different technology stacks, is we're not able to put the best foot forward from our innovation and time to innovate. Also, it's a byproduct. Cost is always a good thing if you can do it in a lower cost in a structured way that enables innovation. That's the main motto for TransUnion. But it started at Newstar, and then we have converted our overall organization to let's become a platform centric and put a lot more of our weight into the core capabilities in an end to end data analytics value chain or the, into the core platform. And, and to do that, to be able to innovate, you've got to have at least a you know, table stakes is having a substrate that can abstract that complexity, that underlying complexity of, of the infrastructure and a, a, a consistent developer environment. Of course, we call it super cloud. Uh, we heard very similar stories uh, from Walmart earlier today. So can you describe, uh, I think you call it one true and one dev. Can you describe what those layers look like and exactly what they are? One dev is our infrastructure abstraction layer. We have our infrastructure spread across AWS, GCP, and a very large private cloud infrastructure, a converged private cloud infrastructure. Across these infrastructures, we wanted to create a set of abstraction to provision any infrastructure in a secure way with golden images and templates, you know, basically of, you know, exactly security sanctioned, um, you know, infrastructure and be able to deploy an entire pipeline, get going with your app in a day. You know, we have a core Hello World production infrastructure for any dev team within a day and be able to move between cloud infrastructures. That is make the infrastructure management very easy, including how we log, how we monitor, how we alert. Some of the core services that you expect out of the infrastructure, push it to the infrastructure layer. That's the core of the one dev. It's very similar to the story both of you were talking about in your super cloud you know, envision. We invested a lot. We have an engineering team. We went from data centers, you know, engineers being able to wire and rack servers and things through a infrastructure software team. It, it's become a software platform to abstract all the components underneath it to create a unified abstraction layer. That's one dev for us. Venkat, talk about the, uh, the, oh, good. Oh, yeah, well, he's not one true, is the other piece, right? Go ahead, I want to try to One true is the core business enablement piece. So now, for an information and analytics business, our core is being able to assimilate tens of thousands of data sets, billions of records every day, in a very highly governed, highly permissioned infrastructure, curate, cleanse, and quality that data, identity resolution of that data to connect it to a consumer level, with persistent identity, and then be able to develop thousands of features for the model development, and be able to develop interesting ML models and solutions on top of it, and deliver those in terms of APIs in real time, streaming, as well as good old batch, you know, to be able to deliver a lot of data through batch. That entire capability set end to end, which makes revenue for us, is the data platform, the data analytics platform, that is one true. That's our core solution enablement platform. 80% of the capabilities for any product that we offer is embedded into this platform so that the product engineers work on the core. What is the input payload? What's the output payload for API I'm working on? What's the new ML model I need? And they leverage a lot of the core capabilities. That one true platform rapidly creates innovation for us new revenue generating products for us. And just a quick follow-up. So you, and you're responsible for your own governance layer. You might be using some other products, but really you control the, the entire governance layer in the stack. Is that right? Absolutely. 
so being a large data company with a lot of proprietary and public based information we have governance and security and privacy by design is at the core tenets of what we do as a result being able to auto tag all the data that we have being able to manage and govern those tags as to what is the workflow that needs to happen on each one of these data sets the permissioning and the granular controls of this data set it's a first class citizen infrastructure for us and we built it in a way abstracted in a way as a core feature of one true so that we get consistency across absolutely right on a day Ben, can I want to get your thoughts as you look at the landscape right now, you guys got your own project at many layers, got an identity layer in there, all these different layers of abstraction. When you look at today's market, you got this Databricks and Snowflake, Google BigQuery, Microsoft, AWS. There's a lot of talk about open data formats, governance and cataloging being decoupled from where you store the data. And then finally, the spending levels are starting to shift. Now that you have your own end-to-end -end platform, I'm sure you still you probably still engage other vendors, but what do you see out in the market in terms of the narrative that is BS um, or maybe a little bit overinflated? If you could look at, are people taking liberties right now with Gen AI? Is it, is it harder than it looks? Is it easier than it looks? Or where is it more real? A lot of the conjecture from many people, oh yeah, we're hundred percent open. Read the fine print. We can read, but we can't write tables. So like there's a lot of FUD as, you, you're controlling your own destiny over there, but you got to work with other data sources. You got APIs connecting things. So you guys are probably have a high bar on that. Where's the BS, where's the noise, where's the signal? So we have from a data perspective, we have a very high bar as to what we take, the provenance of the data, you know, everything. But the way we control the data, we have an infrastructure to be able to think through every use case, permission the use case, what data it can be used, the lineage of the permission and the usability by purpose is one of the core tenets of the platform. Now, we have one of the best infrastructures to be able to do low code platform for everything. That's what we've started off, including data in just a lot of ML assisted data tagging, everything the end to end flow, we have a very low code platform. What are we doing with Gen? So as a result of how we built this platform, Think of the 13,000 associates that we have in our company. Most of them touch and feel the bread, either you're data onboarding, or you're a data scientist, or you're a data governance steward, or you're a delivery person trying to deliver the data on behalf of the customer. All of these users are users of our one true platform. So one of the best things for us, the crawl, walk, run is, how do we take this low code platform to a no code platform? How do we actually really give functionality, Gen AI functionality to our internal users to be able to accelerate what they do. So that is an area where we put a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. We put a lot of effort to be able to understand, I want to explore this data to be able to do some things. We've done a chain of models to be able to understand and generate because these are very specific patterns we know, very narrow patterns. So are you building your own models? Because I mean, I hear people that are in your position they have that proprietary data, like, hey, I'm not going to lose that model. I'm going to build my own models. I'll fine tune the hell out of them. I'm going to make sure the reinforced learning is controlled. Um, that seems to be the sentiment. Is that the way you see it too? Are you going to just build your own models? And where, if you do work with other models, is what conditions would you work with them on? So we're doing both. So there are normal use cases where developer productivity use cases, we're using models where we can't leak our data, but we're putting production, we're using third-party products in what we call taker use cases. We're taking some third-party products. But in our core data platform, we are going with a maker strategy. We don't have to build all the way the LLMs and other things, right? You know, so what we are doing is we have a private space where we control the inputs and outputs and most of the things we're doing are in a rag-based approach or tuning for very specific patterns, narrow problems, because we are already templatized for most of these users. The end, end patterns that exist for these users, we are further going down the automation chain for helping some of these users be able to accomplish mm -hmm. leveraging Gen AI. And that's where we're leveraging still third-party models, but we're del delivering them in a secure space and tuning them and be able to 
and get the artifacts in. Okay, so question for you on your architecture. I noticed you've got the one true platform. You got the main pillars: identity, delivery, analytics, data management, and then you got an API. You got an interface into other sets of services from consumer to true audience. And you, then you, you're saying you got AI powered, multi instant, multi cloud wrapped around the services. How is that? Um, inside the platform AI powered, or is that AI powered like a co-pilot? And is that interface into the API set services? So we have agents embedded within the platform. As you as a data onboarder, for example, you're a simple user, you come to the platform, you're using search. Why not have a AI powered search? We have a rag based search to run across just the help documents. Think of our one true platform. It has thousands of pages of help documents. How do I author a data validation rule? Walk me through exactly what I need to do. So you have a rag based agent that can assist you with being able to direct you exactly step one, step two, three, and give you the three step concise summary of what you need to do. Think of you're a data onboarder. You just got a new file and you know exactly what, you know some things of what needs to be done, but you need to be able to ingest that into one true. We have a data onboarding assistant, an agent embedded within the one true platform that understands and can introspect this data and can assist you to accelerate you know, this thing. So we have a lot of agents embedded within it. And two, we have a lot of services with ML models, APIs that you can call that generate a predictive responses of what is the likelihood of this uh, person to do that, right? In a lot of marketing, and targeting APIs and other things. We have APIs that have embedded models as well that de deliver very predictive results. How much of your data is vector indexed? You mentioned RAG before, obviously there's a trend towards neural network infrastructure, graphs are hot, knowledge graphs, but getting those embeds create that neural network on for great retrieval. How much of that in your piece is, is set up you mentioned RAG earlier, is that a feature if someone might want to set up some retrieval and get vector index, or you most of your data becoming indexed? Most of our data is becoming indexed. The, I'll tell you the use case, or fraud models. Fraud is a big application for, for, for product area for us. In our fraud areas, we are digesting unstructured data, structured data, factorizing them and being able to create what we call this behavioral knowledge graphs, the knowledge graphs to really understand. And in these cases where we put out a paper, one of our data scientists, the data science team, fraud data science team, learning from the LLMs, you know, how you do, you know, right? Understanding the grammar of fraud. Just like LLMs understand yeah. the language, yeah. we're doing all of the underlying elements like you talked about, control the learning, control the, you know, so how do you understand the grammar of fraud? Especially fraud, very latent, you know, very, multi-step fraud that people you know, are lurking in there to be able to do. So we can help our customers with our deep learning base and knowledge graphs, combination of deep learning and knowledge graphs, be able to deploy the next generation of fraud models. So we're doing all of those things that you're talking about, especially in the fraud and marketing areas. It's a great research areas for all the of us. The scale of the neural network piece gives you great scale on the data, so awesome. So. I mean, I love your app, by the way. Um, I love your credit score on me, of you deep into the 800s, so thank you for that. Um, I, need, I need work down in the 400s. What I've, yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm not. What, what I've, I've, over, the, over the years, of course, we've noticed the quality of the data has, has gone up. The, you mentioned fraud detection. Just fraud detection today is you know, real time or near real time. Uh, when you talk about agents, uh, how do you see the applications that you guys are building on top uh, and the agents specifically affecting uh, the, the experience of your customers. Uh, is, is, are the agents really driving costs down? Are there new applications uh, or capabilities like we've seen with fraud detection that dramatically compress you know, the time uh, that you can detect fraud? What are the types of things that we should expect as you know, consumers and partners over the next several years? So in ML models, we have applications for customers. You know, we're doing deep, you know, a lot of interesting ML fraud, uh, marketing attribution in fraud areas where we do ML advanced ML models that are available to customers today in the products that they use. 
But Gen AI, the agents that I talked about, are platform assistants, if you will. Your usage of the platform, they give you a boost in the arm and accelerate what you're trying to do. It is still early. We have the entire end-to-end -end infrastructure of how to vectorize the data. How are we actually, uh, you know, connect what LMs to use, how to secure the data, the inputs, the prompts, everything else. We platformize those solutions, but initially we're working with internal users and then we'll slowly deploy these agents for our platform clients that are available and coming on our platform. They have end-to-end -end data problems. Think of a marketer in a big bank. They are combining data assets from different uh, sources. They're doing campaigns. They're doing a lot of data extraction and activities. The end-to-end -end life cycle of an acquisition process follows the same things. We will be able to deploy these agents for those users to be able to accelerate those activities. For now, all of these Gen AI based agents, we are transitioning from a low code to no code platform. The great thing with us is we are managing tens of petabytes of data, thousands of users on our platform ourselves. And we're first working, making sure everything works and then we'll deploy some of those agents, make those available to our customers as well. So we're in our Let's work internally. Let's make sure we get internal productivity and they're right, and then we'll deploy it to our customers. When crawl, you, walk, run. When you think about that level of automation and in the spirit of crawl, walk, run, when you see something like the events of, I think it was a week ago Friday with the blue screen of death and, and so forth, does that give you pause? Um, and how does that affect the way that you think about that automation and, and those agents? It is. Agents are all an add-on approach. The agents, if you log on to one tool today, I can go on and go through my multi-screen approach to onboard my data, or I can talk to one tool and talk to the agent and let me enable it. It's a duality approach. It's not, you know, this thing, but I know the blue screen of death, you know, the specific causes there, but we are not, you know, it's like in the data platform, we are much more, uh, and that's one of the reasons very protective about what is embedded in this end-to-end -end data analytics value chain, how we abstract, how we bring third party elements, how we test our own services we're deploying there to be able to have a much tighter control on there. But uh, yeah, you know, it, it makes that much more important for us, for our strategy to be able to have the engineering team orchestrate the end-to-end -end value chain for us because it's just not enough to ingest the data. It all, it's all a connected ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're able to deliver some of the innovative functionality faster because we're going for consistency and abstraction of the end-to-end -end functionality. I think that key points out also the trend for end-to-end -end is because of the systemic, it's a system architecture, it's a systems thinking mindset. And I think Dave, your point about the collateral damage was a network effect. The system, yeah. the collateral damage from just an update on DevOps is okay. Now they have issues there, but this is the point. Observability picks it up done, yep. it's a system, it reacts to things, <laughs> oops. But that's what you guys have control of. So that's that, uh, uh, that's the key. That's the key, you know, and not when we're not saying, you know, it's like there's one component that couldn't cause, you know, this thing, and that gives a pause to everyone that thinks we have it, we have the automation, right? To be able to go back and inspect everything you're automating or the auto updates and everything else, how you control and the amount of testing that you do and what you think is a trivial update, but uh, we're putting a lot of effort. Yeah. The One of the core things with our one true platform is there's seven product family brands, true audience for marketing, true validate for fraud, the credit risk, all of these products that generate billions of revenue for TransUnion, we're centering them on the same platform centric approach on one true. As a result, we get leverage and the investment that we can put we have thousand engineers plus working on the core one two platform. That's the leverage that we get. We can do different things, you know, how we abstract the entire end to end value chain. Venkat, I think it's safe to say that you're in the data business and you get a lot of it. Um, that's well understood. I think the now you're in the supercomputing business. You're in the distributed network business. You're in the operating system business. So I have to ask you with all this gen AI being infused and everything, it's a complex system that's evolving. How do you look at that next 20 mile stair out on the landscape as you go forward? 
and build on this. I mean, it's going to be another abstraction. It happens all the time. As Andy Grove said, that famous Intel CEO, let chaos reign and reign in the chaos. This is what we're looking at, a big wave coming. What do you, what's your view? What's your vision? So the way we're, you know, so in the next gen data platform, we're going sour over less on many of the components on how we leverage the public cloud components itself, right? Wanda abstracts a lot of the operating systems and, you know, the things that we use and how, you know, basically how, how the containers work. So the data engineers that work on the data platform itself are so abstracted now that they don't worry about any of the things because Wanda abstracts well, they don't need to understand where it wants. Uh, there are so much abstractions built in, but uh, you're right, you know, the future is exciting with the, the level of capability we have now. Just within a short few years ago of how we're leveraging some of, you know, it's like we talk about serverless functions for a lot of time. We talk about being able to abstract the compute and the storage separately. We used to talk about this, but this is all a reality now. And it's driving a lot of flexibility, a lot of very specific usage and driving a lot of innovation for us, you know, end to end. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being Nirvana, the, the perfect scenario, one being you're screwed. Gen AI foundationally and the prerequisites for it, how much does end to end architecture matter on a scale of one to 10 to take advantage of the Gen AI, which means leveraging data, understanding how to use it in low latency scenarios, replicating it, making sure it's safe, protecting it, having an end to end, which is going to have a retrofit because you're going to bring Gen AI into your workloads. What is it? It is very, it is very important. And that's why we are fundamentally thinking about it from to have a best Gen AI infrastructure, you first need to start from what is your knowledge graph? How do you assimilate your structured data and unstructured data together? How are you going to be able to derive new knowledge you know, through these gaps? And how are you, how is the semantic information fed in? How are you being able to deliver models you know, in, for specific use cases? But to you to do all of that, you have to have a rock solid infrastructure for you to deploy at scale, build your knowledge graphs at scale, feed those to the appropriate models, protect the data so that the data leakage is not there. These are all first class concerns, you know, so, you know there is a lot of attraction to do POCs very early, but we are about building the end-to-end -end infrastructure for us to be able to yeah. store the vectorized information properly, create the knowledge graphs, connect it, connect it, deploy it well, so that then we can work on, enjoy the results. The POCs, going from POC to production without the proper architecture yeah. is going to be very hard. It's a very easy POC, yeah. very hard production to go to production. I won't even get into the whole RFP thing, but we won't even go there now. Venkat, congratulations. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time coming on our SuperCloud 7, the future of the next data platform. And again, hats off to your team, props. You guys got a really great, impressive uh, architecture over there and, and looking forward to following up and hearing more. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Dave. Really enjoyed the conversation. Okay. Thanks, man. SuperCloud 7, the next data platform, the survey data is out, the mother of all surveys, survey of all surveys. The data is clear, the platformization is here. The tools will be part of the platform. It's an end-to-end, -end. it's foundational. The world is changing very, very fast. This Gen AI is going to force a complete refactoring of the data platform. It's going to come in very fast, of course. We're here to unpack it on theCUBE. We'll be right back with more SuperCloud 7 after this short break.